Ford and Volkswagen, they've had an interesting year. Now, for one, they've already had a breakup this year. They broke up their autonomous driving division in Europe, cost them billions of dollars to basically to solve it and say, yeah, that was a big waste of time. And now Ford is saying, well, you know what, Volkswagen, we're not that impressed with what you're doing. Your EV platform isn't what we thought it was. Herbert Dees was right. We're going to go our own way. We're going to do our own thing. And that is probably the best decision Ford has made in years. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel on the Electric Viking. My name is Sam Evans, coming to you from Melbourne, Australia. Thank you for tuning in. It's great to see you. Welcome to 2023. It's going to be a sensational year. How will this year play out for Volkswagen and Ford? Well, let me know what you think in the comment section below. I think it's going to be another tough year for Volkswagen. Global sales will decline for Volkswagen again. Why? Well, for one, their biggest markets are what? Europe and China. Where is the world's biggest disruption happening? Electric cars, disrupting gasoline powered cars. Now, yes, you might say, well, Volkswagen Group increased its sales in 2022 by a little bit. Well, it didn't increase its sales. In fact, its sales fell more than 10%. But it did increase its electric vehicle sales, but not enough to make up for the shortfall, not even close. So even if Volkswagen does make twice as many EVs as they made in 2022, it still won't be enough to make up for the shortfall. In my opinion, Volkswagen could be in a lot of trouble. Remember, they have a lot of debt. Some of you have messaged me trying to tell me that their debt is illusory, it's imaginary. It's not imaginary, it's real. They have to pay back that debt. And yes, it's going to be a tough year for them. Now, Ford has recognized the fact that Volkswagen's EV platform, the MEB platform, it's not efficient to build, it's not affordable to build. It's a lot like the Toyota BZ4X platform, it's decent. It's good by the standards of 2020, by the standards of 2023, 2024. It's expensive and it's inefficient. It's the key reason why it takes Volkswagen 30 hours to build an EV and 10 hours for Tesla. Now, Tesla fans didn't say that, by the way, for those of you who you know, want to make some comments below. Guess who said that? The CEO of Volkswagen. So you can say what you like, but he said it. Not me. I'm just repeating what he said. So initially Ford was going to use Volkswagen's MEB platform. And it was kind of at the time, maybe a good move, possibly. Well, Ford thought it was. However, Ford is pulling away from that. According to a new report, Ford expects to develop its own in-house platform, shifting its previous alliance away from Volkswagen. Now, right now, Ford makes pickup trucks for Volkswagen. The new Amarok, Ford makes it. And Ford and Volkswagen are planning on having an electric pickup in the future. But I don't believe that will be a joint partnership anymore. I believe Ford is gonna go their own way. That's a good move. Now Ford is developing an in-house platform and shifting away from Volkswagen's MEB. Electric says that Ford partnered with Volkswagen in 2020 to use the German automaker's modular electric drive matrix, which was its electric vehicle skateboard to launch an electric vehicle in Europe. Now, although Ford's EV offerings consist of the Ford F-150 Lightning and the Mustang Mach-E in the US, it wanted to take a more global approach, partnering with Volkswagen to produce at least one and possibly several passenger vehicles built off the MEB platform and priced at a lower price point than the Mustang Mach-E. Now, this was according to the president of Ford Europe, Stuart Rowley. Now, obviously, Stuart himself doesn't want to be the president of nothing uh, if Ford doesn't do much in terms of making these EVs in Europe, it won't exist in Europe anymore. I mean, Ford doesn't have a huge presence in Europe as it is, a lot more than General Motors does, but it's still not huge. Obviously, Ford's two key markets are North America and China. However, to enter the evolving European market with maximum speed and profitability, it would make sense, possibly, well, it did at the time, for Ford to, to partner with another company in order to save on manufacturing its own platform. 
Now this partnership is expected to double its planned volume to 1.2 million units over the next six years. It just won't be with the MEB platform. GM of Ford Model E Europe, Martin Sander, gave us an idea of what to expect when he teased a photo of an EV under wraps with a comment, can't wait for 2023 to arrive when we pull the cover off our first electric passenger vehicle coming from Cologne. I don't know about you, but to me that looks like possibly a medium sized electric SUV. That's my thoughts. Now, interestingly, on the same day this happens, Citroen's boss CEO comes out and says, EVs will cause the death of the SUV. He says it's for a variety of reasons, including the fact that, of course, the shape of an SUV, it's illogical because it's you know pushing through the wind. I mean, for example, a wagon has the same exact interior space, possibly often more subspace, in fact, takes up the same space, but it's lower. It gets a much, much better range, getting 50 to 80, 100 kilometers more range, simply by having a different height of the vehicle. So he thinks... SUVs are dead, while Ford doesn't, they're relying on them big time. It looks like the collaboration will be short lived though between Ford and Volkswagen over the next few years. And according to a new report from Financial Times, Ford is now moving away from the MEB platform. It's definitely changed its mind. It's going in house. And I think that's a smart move. It did the same thing with Rivian, in fact. Ford initially invested into Rivian, but it made it very clear. It wanted nothing to do with Rivian's platform. It didn't think it was all that good. Now, do I agree with that? No, I don't. I think Rivian is a pretty good car. But maybe Ford was looking at the cost to manufacture it and thought it was too expensive, and that's very possible. Martin Sander, head of electric vehicles in Europe, says Ford's new electric vehicle platform will have no kind of integration with Volkswagen. It is very versatile, very capable, unlike Volkswagen's offerings. No, I didn't, he didn't say that. He just said, it will have no kind of integration with Volkswagen. It is very versatile and very capable. Interesting that he made that and kind of a slight on Volkswagen there, really. We're exploring all kinds of opportunities, how far we can go and what kind of segments we can cover with this. Sanders says a final decision has not yet been made and Ford is open to developing EVs with Volkswagen or other automakers as long as they're a new modern platform not some old school thing that costs too much money to build. That's pretty much what Ford said. Do I think that Ford is coming to this party very late? Yeah, it's crazy late. I mean, come on. They haven't made a decision yet on their new platform. You're talking five years to do and manufacture this product. This decision should have maybe been made a long, long time ago. I'm a bit concerned that Ford is dilly-dallying on this. It's strange. Ford announced in October it would scrap the Fiesta production worldwide as it works to trim its portfolio and focus on electric vehicles. In many countries worldwide, it stopped selling the Ford Focus as well. Now Sanders also claims that Ford may end gas-powered sales before the 2030 deadline if demand in the market moves faster than expected, like they say it always has. Now, Jim Farley, the CEO of Ford, said that Ford had their iPhone moment it was about six to eight months ago. When they realized that, oh, actually, oh, duh, oh, people do want EVs. Oh, didn't realize that. They seriously, that's what seriously Jim Farley actually said. Ford had their iPhone moment. They finally woke up to the fact that, oh, we now have 100,000, actually, I think it was 180,000 pre orders for EVs. Oh, maybe there is a lot of demand. Yeah, 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 we need to go all in. Now, to enter the EU market is not going to be easy because Ford will have to do it with a platform that competes with who? Well, it's gonna to have to compete with Tesla, who will eventually be making a Model 2, an affordably priced electric vehicle in Germany. In Europe, it's gonna to have to compete with BYD, who are gonna be shipping vehicles to Europe. BYD also plan on making vehicles in Europe. It's gonna be competing with a whole bunch of Chinese manufacturers who are flooding the market with EVs. That's gonna be a tough market, very, very tough. I personally think Ford's gonna have a really difficult time getting any real headway in that market, it's probably gonna lose market share, if anything, rather than actually gain it. I think it's very, very optimistic to assume they're gonna gain market share in a or in a dynamic situation like this where one group of established EV manufacturers, funny to say that, but they are now, is coming in and disrupting the gasoline powered players. And realistically in Europe, even though Ford does sell some EVs, they're still predominantly a gasoline powered player. It's in a market. 
which wants EVs. Ford right now is really not in a position to supply them. I think they know that. I think they know they're going to have to focus on keeping their two markets, China and North America. Eventually, it might just be North America, the United States and Canada. But as long as they can make a lot of EVs in Canada and the US, they can do very well there and make a lot of profit. But it would mean the global market would shrink significantly and make them very dependent upon basically two or three countries. Now, obviously, Ford building its own platform and recognizing the fact that the MEB platform is not efficient, it's not cost effective. Volkswagen don't make a profit on EVs and they sell more than 500,000 a year. They should be, but they don't. Why else would they have just raised the prices of their electric cars when the competitors are doing the opposite? Sanders mentioned that Ford expects to launch EVs in its own, on its own in-house system that Ford is engineering in the United States. So clearly that's what Ford's decided to do. Maybe they actually did make a decision on this a while ago and they just didn't tell us. That would make sense. That's the most likely scenario here. I don't believe Ford is, has really been doing nothing, dealing and dealing on this new platform. I think they've probably been working on this for quite a while now. Clearly, to compete with General Motors and Tesla, they know they need a cost-effective, affordable platform. They know, I think, that they need lithium-ion phosphate batteries, or at least lithium-ion phosphate, possibly in combination with sodium-ion batteries, in order to be able to compete. All right, That's what Tesla will be doing. General Motors, they're building their own platform. Yeah, it's not exactly groundbreaking like General Motors say it is, but it's certainly going to be mass-manufactured, which will help to reduce the cost. Ford have got to compete with that. They know it. They know they can't lose the US market, the North American car market. So this new platform, I think will actually be pretty good. But can they get market share in Europe with it? Highly unlikely in my view. I do think Ford will drastically increase their electric vehicle deliveries this year, but they'll still remain the pickup company. Can they make enough electric pickup trucks to survive over the next five years? Well, that's a good question. I'll have a video coming out about that very soon. Thank you for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. As always, my friends, have a great day.